some of the a bit of the history of this is that in about 1985 we get into the bee business and the most expensive part of the bee business is trying to buy woodenware. There wasn't too many manufacturers around, so my brother is a mechanical engineer, so we set about building our own equipment. That's probably the main reason that we have been successful is we haven't had huge outlay for capital on equipment. Uh, having said that, if we put a value on the time we spent building it, probably not cheap. But. So what we did to begin with, this is our second facility. We bring our raw lumber in. We buy a full 10 inch pine, usually eastern white pine. Um, That's this stuff here? You betcha. Yeah. And we've had, we've had pretty good luck uh, getting it. It's a little bit tougher recently because of the value of uh, construction lumber. This, this used to be very stable on price, but one construction lumber went above the price of this. The price of this has gone up and a bit harder to get because it's easier for them just to cut it into 2 by 4 and 2 by 6s than to worry about cutting it out into 1 by 10 So from the time that, well in the last year, the price of this stuff has pretty much doubled over that time. So that makes it a little bit interesting. But we buy it in, we buy it by the trail and boat. We have a couple very good uh, sources and uh, bring it in. We, we bring it in here. This, this would be a, this, this, this is a selective one for a Christmas present. But 16 foot lifts, so the lifts can vary, size, length. It comes here, we rough cut it to rough length. We give a, a boat a half an inch space on each or uh, on a length in length so that we have something to cut. This is a saw that we have, that we built ourselves. Uh, works very well for what we have here. This rough cuts it. We move it on and the machine we have there trues it to size. It makes it exactly the same width all the way along. Uh, we could do that in a table saw but it takes time. From there, we move, move over, and if you don't look at all the nice cabinet work in that one, but we move over, that's what we call our scrubbing machine. That cuts it to the exact length that it has to be, and it also squares it. And we have it adjustable to the point where it's within um, probably a 30 second all the time, and lots of times it's perfect. We bring it from here, these are our box machines, and uh, not all the secrets broke. They, they do not utilize knives; they utilize cutters, and we found that is a lot easier to get uh, a notch to match. And the other thing about it, this is for making the finger joint. This right? is making yeah. the finger joint, and they're all separate. If we set up a, a, a gang saw setup and something goes out of whack, now we have to adjust the whole series of blades. Whereas this, these are separate, so if we have one notch goes a little bit out, we can adjust that one separate. So we don't have to, to, to fight with them. So that we have one for the short, one for the long. They drop out. drop into a, onto a conveyor. This conveyor puts in your handhold and it all, also puts in your frame rest notch. It's all done in one. Um, I got to give the brother, the brother did most of the designing if not all and this, they all work well. This works tremendous. So that's one of the advantages that we do have. Mm -hmm. They go through, they're sorted from a commercial grade, which includes your select and your commercial. Then we select out budget. And the budgets are ones that maybe don't look quite as nice. Maybe have a bigger knot or a loose knot. We 
we stack those up. Then we have some that we just keep for cut down, six and five eighths. They might have a, a flaw on the bottom. That way we can utilize most all of our, of our lumber. You'll see in the corner here, we do have some piles. These are, these are pieces that are just a little bit too thin, so it's not that they're wasted. We use them for top bars, bottom bars, all that are bottoms, tops. Um, so we can utilize most, most all of them. Up. And the, the sawdust all goes to a dairy. Dairy takes this as, as uh, bedded. And he, they love it. They said they say that when they run out of sawdust, their bacteria count just goes off the chart. So they take this, uh, and when we run out, they're looking for sawdust. So that it's a good way of getting rid of that byproduct, as well as the other pieces that we can't use. We have a boiler that that heats uh, our facility, so we're utilizing as much as we can. One of the things that when we started the business, we didn't want to give the impression that everything we did was perfect. It's, it's not. We make mistakes. But we try and do functional pieces of, it, of, of woodenware so that it works in the field. Um, we have experience with that. We run in about a thousand hives. I've got a lot of really good ideas that are sitting up in the garbage pile right now, <laughs> waiting for the boiler. This is our frame pan. Every piece of equipment is set out into sections. Bottom bar section. Top bar section. End bars. Right now we're working on end bars. Our end bar stock is set up. In, whether it'll cut six, seven, or eight end bars at a time. We will put it into this machine. This machine will cut it to exact length and also puts the grooves for your top and bottom bar in. It goes through a, a, a gang saw and that's how it's sliced. We don't we, we're not anywhere near any of the, uh, the cutting materials or cutting saws. That's how this particular one works. And if you, if you follow me, you can see your cuts have been gone through. So now what's happening is this tire is driving it through our game. And we come out with that. These, these pieces are ran through here and that's how we, or we call it a forming machine. Our system is definitely labor intensive. Uh, I'd, I'd like to think we could get something that would be more automatic, but a, a part of our labor people working at it is they're also quality control people at all times so it's a fine line that we that we follow but this this hole is our end bars our bottom bars start from just raw lumber they're cut to a specific length they are ran through a machine which puts the uh, Potatoes on each end to the end bar. Then they're rang through a gang saw, which you can see this one is taken apart and it's going to be sharp. They run through the gang saw all the time, and every step we're, we're trying to sort for quality. They go through the gang saw, this is what we have come out. Now what all we've got left to do is this machine put your little saw curve in the bottom for your foundation. It's fairly, this one is fairly simple. Now we move on to our, our top bar. Our top bar, we, we cut blanks. Blanks are in multiples of 
twos, threes, or fours for the top bar lane, uh, width. <coughs> now this machine here, that machine takes that blank and it cuts it to proper length and it puts the level, the straight cut, as well as the bevel on it. <coughs> when we originally started, we made our top bars that were just clean and flush, straight through. We couldn't understand why anybody would want that level or slope on it. That is much stronger than just a straight cut through. Um, I guess it takes more of, the, of this It'll, it'll carry more weight on that slope. I wouldn't have believed it, but they are much stronger. But having said that, they go through. So we come out with a, a blank with our ends on. This is our gang saw. They run through the gang saw. And the gang saw cuts them to width, as well as puts our center section in, which is a, a two-tier section. That's just to accommodate different foundations goes through and then this is our notching machine and when we put it through here that's what puts our, our notches in and it runs through there so it takes two people to run this but the output of this is about 1600 an hour is what we can do that and that'll make a, a six and five eights we get rid of that now, uh, James, who does this, is pretty fussy, and I think sometimes if we dip that, it's not going anywhere, but... Now, obviously, that knot wouldn't bother me very much. No. Because it's inside the... Uh... Well, and the other thing is, Phil, if you dip that, yeah. it's not going yeah. anywhere. Yeah. But you'll, you'll also have guys that, unless it's clear, they question it. Okay. Here's my order, 8,000 frames, top bar. So how is this organized here? 8,000 top bars, uh, 16,000 end bars, 8,000 and, and 8,000 bottom bars. And there's, we put, there's 102, 102, 204 okay. in each stack. Fine. Beautiful. So, yeah, so you can afford to throw one or two away. Well, You'll be surprised how cheap I am. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, let's load so, it up. 